Hello there. Welcome to Just the Discs. We talk about Blu-rays here. Uh, for this episode, I am doing a little collection update. I've got a bunch of stuff that I've picked up uh, over the last several months. And um, just sort of cherry-picked some fun stuff to talk about briefly um, that, um, that I've gotten in the collection. And I will start with one of my favorite films. That is The Last Detail, directed by the great Hal Ashby from 1974, I want to say, 73, uh, starring, as you can see, Jack Nicholson, Otis Young, Randy Quaid, Clifton James, it's uh, Carol Kane. It's a wonderful cast, and it's a great story, uh, written by Robert Town, who would do Chinatown and it is a story about a couple Navy men, a couple sailors who are roped into a not so hot detail, a job, an assignment. They are to take a young man to prison uh, from, I can't remember from to where, but basically they have to run him up to a military prison and that young man is played by Randy Quaid, who is very youthful in this film. And he is accused, well, he is convicted of stealing from the collection box on the base, like, church. And the collection box happens to be for the commanding officer's favorite charity. His wife is in charge of it. So he's gotten, like, an extensive sentence, like eight years or something, Um and uh, so Otis Young and Jack Nicholson play Mule and Badusky, and they are assigned to take this kid up. And they get per diem, and they get a certain amount of days to take him. So they decide, well, we're going to make a fun trip out of this. We'll run him up in like one day, we'll put him on a bus, uh, and then we'll party our way back on the per diem. And it'll be a blast. And, you know, let's let's take care of this kid. Let's get out of here. But what ends up happening is they get to know the kid. They get to know why he's being, you know, going to jail and all this. And they have some sympathy for him. And so they sort of become friends. And it becomes a little like, well, if he's going to go to jail, let's send him out on a high note. Let's Let's party with him. Let's, you know, do some things he wants to do and make it a worthwhile trip overall. And so it's a story of friendship and comedy and was highly controversial at the time for the language in the film. There's swearing as you, you know, swearing like a sailor. This is the movie that exemplifies that. And there is a lot of crazy heavy language in this. There's a great scene in a bar. I am the blank shore patrol and uh such it's it's wonderful it's a film that i truly truly love and it's one of nicholson's great performances otis young is fantastic and i just adore it um so this is the new 4k from shout select very excited looks good um and of course hal ashby had done harold and maude and would do a whole bunch of other great stuff in the 70s 4K restoration from the original camera negative. Introduction by filmmaker Alexander Payne about a trip. Appreciation by Alexander Payne. A search for the truth. An interview with uh, editor Robert C. Jones. Those are some of the features you get on this one. But I had to get it. It's, like I said, one of my absolute favorite films. So that is the last detail. Then we have... I haven't even opened this yet. Uh, the Tenebrae. Uh, this is the Synapse 4K of Tenebrae. Dario Argento's film. From 1980, uh, boy, 82. Yeah. Lots of great stuff here. Italian horror maestro Dario Argento elevates the genre, the giallo genre, to new heights with 1982's Tenebrae, a darkly humorous and notoriously grisly murder mystery that many consider to be one of his finest works. I'm one of those. American mystery author Peter Neal, Anthony Franciosa, Death Wish 2, comes to Rome to promote. Uh, to promote his newest novel, Tenebrae, a razor-wielding psychopath is on the loose 
taunting Neil and murdering those around him in gruesome fashion, just like the character in his novel. As the mystery surrounding the killing spirals out of control, Neil investigates the crimes on his own, leading to a mind-bending, genre-twisting conclusion that will leave you breathless. Co-starring John Saxon, John Steiner, and featuring the beautiful cinematography of Luciano Tavoli, who shot Suspiria. So, obviously looks good. I haven't even looked at this yet. I don't even have to. I know it's going to look great. Stunning new 4K restoration from the original camera negative of three versions of Tenebrae, including the original Italian language version, the English language version, and its U.S. cut entitled Unsane. Limited edition packaging. This is the nice hard hard box. It comes with a book and um, a whole bunch of extra features. So you have two 4Ks in here uh, and a Blu-ray. The third Blu-ray containing the... Uh, all the same as disc one. So, um, but you have the features broken. I mean, look at this stuff. It's crazy. Um, you have audio commentary by Alan Jones and Kim Newman, audio commentary by Argento expert, Thomas Rostock, audio commentary by Maitland McDonough, author of broken mirrors, broken minds, uh, dark dreams of Argento, yellow fever, the rise and fall of Giallo, feature length documentary charting the genre from its beginning to its, in, uh, influence on the modern slasher film, Featuring new interviews with Dario Argento, Umberto Lenzi, Luigi Cosi, and more. And, I mean, just goes on and on. So, I, I this was a must. I mean, Synapse does uh, spectacular 4K work, and they are one of the best out there in terms of this kind of work. So, I know this is going to be an absolute gem. And, I didn't, like I said, I didn't get to open it yet because I've been busy with other stuff that I've been watching. But, had to at least say, if you haven't picked it up, definitely something you're going to want okay next up we have from gold ninja this came as a two-pack uh revengeful swordsman and then um we have uh thrilling bloody sword which is uh well i'll get to that in a second but so revengeful swordsman just looks like super fun this is um justin Clue's label a canadian label and doing lots of interesting stuff I've talked about them on the channel before, a wide variety of, you know, smaller independent films, uh, kung fu and martial arts films, and it's just a very exciting label. So definitely keep an eye on Gold Ninja and what they're doing, because I think it's it's really a worthwhile and small. It's a one-man operation. Um, but so I just got a chance to peek at Revengeful Swordsman. I mean, these are not going to be restored necessarily, but um, it is a new 2K scan and uh, it says, uh, Hai Sying is having a bad day. First, her parents are killed. Then her master betrays her. And finally, she gets thrown off a cliff into a pack of hungry wolves. With all that, there's one solution to her problems. Kill everyone. So she grabs her trusty blade, changes her name to the Heartless Lady, and decides her mission isn't over until all her enemies rest dead at her feet. Um, this guy up here has those two skulls like those are like rocket skulls like there was a great gif that justin tweeted out that was just those firing like rockets off of his shoulders and this guy's got claws i mean just looks super fun um and justin always does a nice job with the, the releases uh this one is never before released on physical media in its original aspect ratio proud to present it in a new 2k transfer from a 35 millimeter theatrical print finally you can enjoy the film's golden skull rockets monk bashing and face whipping the way it's meant to be seen commentary by dylan chung and justin a a beginner's guide to uh wuxia cinema no one can touch her a video exploration of tang lia's career and bonus feature film against the drunken cat's paw from 1979 so you get two films on this this is all region in english and mandarin and very excited to check that one out. That just looks like a blast. And it came as a dual pack with one of their best sellers, which had sold out. And this is um, Thrilling Bloody Sword, uh, which I watched some of and had only heard great things about. It is ostensibly kind of a Seven Dwarfs. I mean, look at that. Dude flying on a dragon-faced. What is happening? It just looks nuts. Uh, new 2K scan. Uh, Common impregnates a queen. She gives birth to a fleshy egg. In disgust, the king tosses the egg in the river. Seven little people stumble onto the egg. They stab it with a knife and find a cute baby inside who grows up to be a beautiful princess. This is the sort of seven dwarfs, uh, the Snow White and the seven dwarfs kind of thing, but 
One day she runs into a prince fighting a multi-headed dragon, and of course the two royals fall in love. Unfortunately, a group of dastardly wizards wants to keep them apart, and they'll use every creature at their disposal to do it. There's nothing like Thrilling Bloody Sword, a brain-melting slice of Taiwanese psychotronic cinema that builds a fan fantasy action movie out of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, impossible fight scenes, and a cavalcade of monsters that include Cyclops, Pterodactyl, Satan himself... Previously available only in a washed-out video transfer, Gold Ninja is proud to rent a super colorful film in new 2K scan taken from the only surviving 35 print. Now, I will say this print is not pristine. It's a little beat up, but obviously this is the best this film's ever looked. And this is part of the reason I got this double set, was just people wouldn't shut up about how great this movie and nuts this movie is. Um, so, uh, commentary track with world pop scholar Tars Tarkas and Justin DeClue. He wrote Every Punch, the career of writer-director Chang His He Hing His Sin Yi, a beginner's guide to psychotronic Taiwanese cinema, and bonus feature, Incredible Kung Fu Mission from 1979. Again, two movies included on this release from Gold Ninja. So that as those. Um, then I got a couple from Paramount. More uh, standard stuff here in terms of things that you know. But just in time for Thanksgiving, we have uh 4K Ultra HD of Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, one of the ultimate classics of John Hughes and of Thanksgiving. I mean, it is basically the ultimate Thanksgiving movie. Uh, a wonderful performance from Steve Martin and uh, the great John Candy. One of the most outrageous and beloved comedies of all time. Looks better than ever remastered in 4K, and it does look wonderful in this 4K presentation. With HDR10 and Dolby Vision, Steve Martin and John Candy star in this hysterical, heartwarming tale of travel gone awry. Neil Page, <laughs> I love Neil Page. Um, Steve Martin is an uptight exec trying to get home to Chicago for Thanksgiving, getting his taxi stolen by uh, Kevin Bacon, um, and for Thanksgiving with his family. When rerouted to Wichita, Neil reluctantly partners with Del Griffith, also one of the great characters ever, John Candy, and an obnoxious yet lovable salesman. Together, they embark on a cross-country adventure that includes multiple modes of transportation, unbelievable mishaps, intimate motel accommodations. <laughs> uh, those are not pillows. Uh, and unforgettable rental car shenanigans. It's a must-have holiday gift from writer, director, and producer John Hughes. Um, so this has all the previous, looks like all the previous uh, special features, uh, bonus lost luggage Blu-ray, legacy and new special features included uh, in Never Before scene deleted scenes and extended scenes so some new stuff with this um but yeah as you can see you have your digital code you have your blu-ray and your 4k and you know it's just a classic it's one that i'm very excited to see paramount uh doing as a 4k you know it's not the first movie i would think like seeing sony put out real genius on 4k was exciting to me because i'm like oh comedies you know i i I love comedies and I love to see them in the best possible presentation. Although I know most often they aren't considered that kind of movie, you know, the kind of movie that you would use to exemplify said presentation. But I do love that we're upgrading even the classic comedies of the eighties right now. And is this from eighties or ninety? I want to say it's like 87 or something like that, but I'm probably misremembering the year. Yeah. 87. Um, but yeah, so just two, classic characters to one of the great buddy comedies very heartwarming and just a lovely film you know really unassailable in that way so great 4k presentation from paramount and definitely worth getting also from paramount uh from the cold of winter to the uh warmth of hawaii you have elvis in blue hawaii and a wonderful 4k presentation I got the great um fold out box that they do for these 4ks and uh i hope we get to see some more elvis movies in 4k uh this one also includes a digital code and a blu-ray uh i did get to check this out and it had been a long time since i'd seen this i'd sort of forgotten what this film was like you know and um it says um elvis's uh, Elvis Presley presents eye-popping 1961 Technicolor musical to 4K HD with HDR10 and Dolby Vision. XGI Chadwick, Chad Gates, is coming home to Hawaii, though his mother, Angela Lansbury, expects him to take over the family pineapple, I think it's pineapple business, um, 
Chad would rather wear an Aloha shirt and than a white collar when he goes to work as a tour guide with his girlfriend's agency. Uh, it isn't long before a group of amorous gals fights for his attention. The first three Elvis movies shot in Hawaii, the first of three, uh, and the film's Grammy nominated, uh, album totaled 20 weeks at number one in the billboard 200 um so a really great slice of life uh and sort of travelogue of hawaii at the time in 1961 and this is beautiful i mean i was expecting it to look nice and it does to see uh these vistas shot in technicolor um it's just it's just a gorgeous looking movie and so I was really, um, I was really excited to check it out again. He's a, he's kind of a rascally character. He likes to play these. I've seen this before, like clam bake and some others where he's sort of a rich kid or a, a kid with a business that he's rebelling against. Uh, but it's, you know, it's a pretty laid back. It's not exactly a beach movie vibe necessarily, but there are a lot of beach musical numbers. You could pair it with, Beach Blanket Bingo or something like that, and it might work. Uh, but, you know, some good songs from Elvis. And, again, just a beautiful-looking movie. I don't, I don't know. This time of year, we're getting into the winter months. It's nice to sit down and just have this beautiful Technicolor uh, vision of old-style Hawaii wash over you, you know? And I'm a fan of Elvis movies. I think they're, they're fun. And, like I said, I'd love to see more of them in 4K but this is a great place to start, you know, with some 4K in your collection for Elvis. Um, so definitely recommended. And um, it comes with a commentary by historian James L. Nybauer and a Blue Hawaii photo scrapbook. That commentary is very good, and I very much enjoyed that. Uh, so this is definitely recommended from Paramount, uh, Blue Hawaii, and 4K. Let's see. Next, we have one I snagged from Mondo Macabro. This is a recommendation from Elric Kane, Hotel Fear. Uh, I don't know too much about it, except that Elric had told me that it was it was enjoyable. Um, 1976, uh, the story takes place in Italy towards the end of World War II in a rundown hotel by the shores of a large lake. A strange assortment of... Uh, Guests are staying there, and they seem to be either suffering from mental illness involved in scams or of one sort or another, or hiding from something in their past. So I kind of like that kind of mysterious bunch of people in a hotel setup. Rosa, a teenage girl played by Lenora Fanny, works with her mother, Marta, trying to keep the hotel functioning due to the war and the frequent bombing raids that take place. The hotel is on its last legs, and even finding food and lodging for the guests is a major problem. Rosa writes letters to send to her father, who is off fighting the war, um, and, like, I don't even need to read too much. This is director Francesca Barilli's second feature film after the highly regarded uh, Perfume of the Lady in Black, which I still need to see. Due to distribution problems, this film is not has been hard to see has never been released in the U.S. before, and this is the world premiere on Blu-ray. Special features new 2K restoration from Original Negative, new interview with director. Um, I don't know. This is an all-region disc. Just Mono Macabro, they tend to have stuff that I've never heard of, and occasionally I don't take the plunge on a blind buy, but this one seemed worthwhile. So Hotel Fear from 1976. Next up, we have The Chocolate War. This is uh, Keith Gordon's directorial debut from 19... I want to say like 1990 or 1989. Um, 1988. Starring uh, Elon Mitchell-Smith, who had been in um, Weird Science, John Glover, Wally Ward, uh, and special guest appearance by Bud Court, Jenny Wright. I'm a big fan of Jenny Wright. Um, this one is based on Robert Cormier's uh, controversial novel, Once the Most Widely Banned Book in America, The Starkly Beautiful Allegory of Abusive Power Set in a Catholic Boys' School, uh, where a chocolate sale becomes a war over the, of conformity. Uh, Jerry, Elon Mitchell-Smith, is a student who refuses to take part in undercutting ambitious school administrator brother Leon. Uh, Leon secretly enlists 
archive, uh, Wallace Langham, accredited as Wally Ward, uh, the sadistic mastermind of the school's resident gang to force Jerry into line, but the motives and results are far more complex than they first seem in this fascinating film done with style and care and with excellence. This is a really great debut from Keith Gordon, and um, I'm a big fan of him as a director and as a film fan. Definitely check him out on the Directors Club podcast. He's made many appearances there and often brings some great recommendations that I enjoy. So this is, as far as I know, this he had said something on one of those about this not being a brand new scan, but it's he says it looks pretty good. Um, and it's got a commentary that comes over from the DVD with him, which I remember liking. And director Keith Gordon discusses uh, the Chocolate War also from the DVD. So you've got that stuff coming over. This, of course, MVD Rewind Collection uh, disc and one that I just had to pick up because I'm a fan of it from a while back. And it's sort of an under-talked about, under-appreciated film. I'm glad it's finally getting a Blu-ray. I wish it was a brand new scan, but again, I'll take it. I don't think another one's coming. So The Chocolate War. And then next up... We have this one I picked up from Diabolic DVD. It is Funky Forest First Contact, but it's the Funky Forest Collection. And this one was, I think, a little rare. I don't know. Um, uh, oh, it's a little beat up, actually. I didn't even realize this. One of my discs got a little cracked in the shipping. That's too bad. Um, but anyway, it was one that... Uh, that I, I've heard great things about the film itself. Uh, so you have Funky Forest First Contact, and then you have The Warped Forest, which is the follow-up to that film. And all I know about Funky Forest, really, is that it is an outrageous collection of surreal, short, attention span, non-sequiturs largely revolving around Guitar Brother, uh, his Randy older, blo- older sibling, and the pair's portly Caucasian brother. So just lots of weird stuff. And crazy cult it just feels like a crazy cult movie type thing to me um and so you get the soundtrack with this and uh like i said you get warped forest as well with lots of features so this one uh animated kaiju dance numbers an organic instrument playing classroom uh, overextended nipple lactation and forest concerts with nature used in place of turntables. These are just some of the far out scenes in that await you in the dizzying, uh, head ripping, sorry, dizzying head up, head trip, funky forest first contact concocted by the devious minds, uh, Katsuo Ishii, shark skin man and the peach hip girl and the taste of tea and two prolific advertisement directors. Uh, took the U.S. by storm when it debuted in 2005, um, playing numerous genre film festivals and winning awards. Uh, new HD transfer from original elements, new audio commentary from the directors, uh, cut scenes, making of, and choreography lesson. And then with... Um, yeah, I'm about that. Uh, this one, we get... Uh, remained mostly unseen since 2011 festival circuit debut, but thankfully we've pulled it from limbo director Sanshiro Miki dives into the realm of the absurd alone, going alone, going alone this go round, but that brings many familiar faces from funky forest Uh, operating as a pseudo sequel to funky to funky warped is filled with same, the same bizarre aura. And we've come to love, uh, including naked women trees and growing pornographic fruit, furry nipple. Yeah, this is getting a little racy here. Uh, new HD from original HD cam tapes, audio commentary with director introduction, making the warp forest. Anyway, I, uh, I got it mostly for funky forest. That was my big, um, want was the, that, and this came as this set. And I don't think funky forest has another release that I'm aware of. Um, but you get the soundtrack and everything too. So that was groovy. Uh, and then just a few more here. We got Cockfighter from Shout Factory. This isn't a Scream release, is it? No, just a Shout Factory release. Um, <clears throat> this is Monty Hellman's film from 1974. Uh, a really great movie. And I got to say, I'm a little disappointed with this transfer. It's not... 
it's not great. Um, I had a Japanese import Blu-ray that looks about the same. I don't know if this film, now that it's gotten this release and the Japanese release, I don't know if it's going to get another release, unfortunately. So I had to get it. Um, it doesn't have uh, the features that were included on the Anchor Bay DVD. So I'm keeping my Anchor Bay DVD that had commentary and a featurette. Uh, but at least this is the Blu-ray. Anyway, Warren Oates uh, plays the titular cockfighter, uh, Frank Mansfield, one of the most infamous trainers in the brutal world of cockfighting. His reputation in tatters due to his hubris. Frank becomes obsessed with making his way to the top of the game against the wishes of his lover, Mary Elizabeth, played by Patricia Piercy. Um, basically, he challenges Harry Dean Stanton, who is another cockfighter dude in this movie, that he will win some big championship and the bet is basically if he loses he can't speak and so we catch up with him after he's lost and he's trying to redeem himself so he can talk again so we get a lot of like there's not a lot of him talking there's internal monologue stuff uh but this one is just really interesting uh written by charles williford a famous um crime fiction writer and who has a starring part in this as a one of the judges or something but great performances by Warren Oates and uh, Richard B. Shull is very good. Millie Perkins. Um, also, Lori Bird, I think, is in this. And one of her few films that she made, uh, she worked with um, with Monty Hellman in Tulane Blacktop and just a few films, ultimately. Um, actually, I want to double check that Lori Bird's in this. But anyway, it's a really great movie. And, you know, a Corman-produced film that uh is one of the better films he ever made it was one i think they had a little trouble marketing and so it would be known as a few things including um born to kill and i want to say there's even another title um yeah laurie bird is in this um so anyway uh but i had to get it again because i'm a big monty hellman fan and i don't know if it's going to get another disc i wish it included the features but that's what I keep my blue my DVD for. So that's Cockfighter. The Ninth Configuration, also from Shout Factory. Another great cult title. This one had come out previously from Hen's Tooth, I think. And I bought that. <clears throat> but this has a new 2K scan of the negative uh, and carries over, I think, all the features that were included on that previous disc. Uh, this one, in the final days, uh, this is a, written and directed by William Peter Blatty of The Exorcist. Uh, psychologically challenging exploration of faith, suffering, and madness. It's a true cult film. Uh, in the final days of Vietnam War, a remote castle in the Pacific Northwest serves as the mental hospital for troubled soldiers scarred by their experiences. Isolated and all but forgotten, the inmates are running the asylum until Colonel uh, Kane, Stacy Keach, arrives to take over their treatment, taking a special interest in one of the new patients, former astronaut Billy Cutshaw, Scott Wilson, who inexplicably aborted his mission to the moon during its final countdown. Um, but this is just some crazy performances from Keats, Scott Wilson, Jason Miller, uh, Neville Brand, George DiCenzo, Moses Gunn, Robert Loggia, Joe Spinell, Alejandro Ray, Tom Atkins, uh, music by Barry Devorzon, and it is just out of its mind, nuts, weird, funny, strange, disturbing. It is everything. It is amazing. Uh, audio commentary by uh, writer-director William Peter Blatty. The writer, producer, director interview with William Peter Blatty. Confessions of Kane interview with actor Stacey Keach. The de debrief of Sergeant Christian interview with actor Stephen Powers. Designing configuration interview with production designer uh, Killer on My Mind interview with Barry Devorzon. Party behind the curtain. Uh, film featurette with film critic Mark Kermode. He's a fan of this. Deleted scenes and outtakes. So this is just a great. Um, a great cult movie and another one that I had to get because at least in this case, it's a new scan and it does look pretty good. Uh, but definitely a cult movie's cult movie, if you will, well worth picking up. That's ninth configuration. And then last but not least, uh, the flesh eaters. This was a website exclusive from scream factory, shout factory. And it is, uh, a 1962 uh, or 60, yeah, 62 film. Um, one of the best kept secrets in cult movie fandom. 
Hungry for Horror director Jack Curtis, the voice of Pops on Speed Racer, offers you a feast to die for in The Flesh Eaters, a flight chartered by petulant film actress and her secretary goes haywire when a storm and engine trouble force their down-on-his-luck pilot to land on the remote island. But this island is inhabited by Professor Peter Bartel, a scientist with a disturbing past and even more disturbing present, experimenting on mysterious microbes existing in the waters surrounding the island. Bartel hopes to cultivate them into insatiable monstrous monstrosities capable of eating their prey's skin in the blink of an eye. An early entry in the splatter film subgenre, Flesh Eaters boasts a screenplay by comics writer Arnold Drake, co-creator of Four Color Favorites, Doom Patrol, Dead Man, and original Guardians of the Galaxy. New 2K Scan uh, from Best of Film Elements, alternate cut, audio commentary with producer Arnold Drake, filmmaker Fred Olin Ray, and author Tom Weaver, um... Interview with actress Delaine Curtis, outtakes, etc. So this just, I've heard this is a good one. I've heard this is a fun, you know, 60s monster kind of creepy movie and um, definitely seemed like one from the Shout Scream online only available catalog that I wanted to pick up. Uh, so that is The Flesh Eaters. And that'll do it for this little collection update. I will try to gather some more discs to talk about in the coming weeks and or so and try and find some more stuff to talk about in terms of that but hopefully you enjoyed this and it offers some ideas for either gifts for yourself or gifts for others uh as we approach the holiday buying season uh thank you so much for watching thank you so much for listening and i'll talk to you soon bye bye